next speaker on deck. Um, it is Sebastian with a very good question that he will address LLMs versus XGBoost. Can a fine tuned LLM beat XGBoost on tabular data? Tell us, Sebastian, uh, can it be done? Thank you, Lily. Hi, everyone. All right, uh, today I will talk with you about uh, what LLMs can do for predictive analytics and if they can beat XGBoost on tabular data. So at IWT, we are doing full-stack data science consulting, everything from architecture development to predictive analytics tasks. And most of our data comes in a tabular form. So I ask myself, can we use those large language models on those tabular data sets and apply them to standard predictive analytics tasks. And yes, today I will present you the my, my findings from those experiments. So I will start with, again, a short introduction, finding suitable data task and data set, and then how you, we would go for fine-tuning those LLMs, the results, and then a few experiments, conclusion, and next steps um, I, I looked at. Yes, so large amounts of structured and tabular data is already in use and our around and, and used all the time. And the question is, do the LLMs know something about the data that's maybe not in the table itself? So the large language models are trained on vast amount of data. Um, maybe they have read the finance subreddit and know something about uh, it that uh, about some data set that the data itself doesn't know. And um, yes, that's kind of what, what I wanted to evaluate. Uh, in the past, uh, I was already experimented when, when BERT came out and how BERT works compared to XGBoost and that was still a clear winner for, for XGBoost. But with the starting hype and, and the great results that the LLMs created, I wanted to look at that uh, again and then see how, how the performance goes. And going for that, the first step was to find a suitable task and a suitable data set for that. And that proved much harder than expected. So when you look at the UCI machine learning repository or, or some other standard data set, you can just copy the CSV line into ChatGPT and ask them, hey, will that customer churn yes or no? And ChatGPT has, uh, or GPT and the large language models have read that data set 200 times during training and can you with 100% accuracy say if the customer will churn or not. So it needs to, needed to be a data set that's not in the training. So we looked for a data set that was published after the, the training period. And also it needed to be a data set where it's from a domain where, where we can expect the LLM to kind of know something about. So going with some IoT device with or some, some other a sensor data set where we have 200 columns, x1 to x250, with all float data, we can't expect the LLM to kind of know anything about that. So we ended up with a, a customer churn prediction data set from a telecommunication provider that got uh, recently uploaded. And then how do you go about fine tuning those tabular data for the LLM? And basically three steps. The first one is to translate the CSV file into natural language. I guess you could even go with the comma separated list of each line, but having a data set with, uh, with a code book and then translating it into a real sentence is more natural than, than what the LLMs are, are used for. Fine tuning itself then uh, works with, uh, because there are those sequence to sequence models and they're predicting the next word. So you are providing basically only the word yes and the word no, and then fine tune the model to predict that word uh, outcome instead of the zero one you have in, in a standard machine learning model. And in the end, we compared those results with, with XGBoost. So have some train test split and evaluated. So the whole pipeline basically is you have your, your, your CSV data, you translate it to natural language. We used uh, ChatGPT for the whole experiment. We used the OpenAI uh, APIs because it's really easy to use. Everything is there. You have the translation with ChatGPT to get your data prompts uh, file. And then you they have a fine tuning endpoint that gives you the trained model and uh, that you can then use for the for the predictions. 
in the next step and then to compare them to XGBoost. And with the churn data set, uh, a cl classic metric is the, the AUC uh, you can use to evaluate your uh, classification. And on the right-hand side, you can see the plot of that. The blue line is, is the XGBoost, which has an, an AUC of uh, 93. And the LLM comes with 91.6, not far behind. So we can see that the LLM actually performs reasonably well on this churn prediction task. So I was quite happy to see that the LLM, even though it's not as good or it's not better than, than XGBoost or at the same AUC, it's, it's quite neg negligible with the small difference. And we can see that the LLM really performs well on this, this data set. Uh, I also tried it with ChatGPT. You can see the red line here uh, when I just without any fine tuning asked ChatGPT, hey, here's a customer from the telecommunication company. So one prompt uh, from the translated data set, do you think it will churn or not? And after 100 uh, tries, I, I stopped because the, the results were worse than random. So some fine tuning is necessary. Uh, one caveat to the whole thing is that I also tried the logistic regression and you can see that's even better than the LLM and has a, an incredible high AUC. So maybe the, the data set wasn't the best to really gouge or you would need a bit of more or, or another data set or something to see how it goes. Um, one problem was, or one thing was maybe does the LLM actually know about the data set um, or uh, not? And um, to kind of understand that we try to add the customer ID to the prompt and see if that improves the fine tuning. So if the data knows about, if the LLM knows about the data, maybe that would improve, but it was not the case. So adding the customer ID uh, changed nothing in the results. It was just noise that was added. Um, then uh, another point was, because the initial idea was that maybe the LLM knows something the, the table doesn't. What happens when we remove like the most important feature for XGBoost from the XGBoost and from the LLM prompt? Uh, will that actually change the performance or it will decrease the performance of the of the models, but will the magnitude of decrease be kind of the same between the LLM and XGBoost or maybe can the LLM compensate for that a little bit? Uh, but there, uh, it was roughly the same decrease when removing the most important variable, so no win for the LLM there. Um, also, I tried a bit with the train test split, trying the different seeds. So each time only only one change, but the uh, uh, variations changed, uh, not that, uh, the results changed not at all. So I think the results for this one data set are, are, are reasonable, uh, robust for, for the first experiments. So as a conclusion, I think we can say that the LLM performs reasonably well uh, on the classification tasks. Um, of course, it's a bit more data preparation than directly using XGBoost with the table. But when you think about uh, for, for mixed data sets, it's like classical tabular data, then you have the text. Normally, you can try to kind of extract features from the text and then put them into your, into your machine learning model. But now you could actually try it the other way around. Uh, translate your tabular data to uh, to the sentence added to the to the other text data you have and use the fine-tuned LLM to do the predictions and be I guess a bit more flexible uh, with the whole uh, yes with, with the approach I think the cost of the whole experiment was I don't know 100 uh, bucks or so so it was cheaper than expected and perfectly well for for like first experiments working with the open AI API was slower than expected so when I did my predictions it took like five minutes for a thousand predictions. I was quite surprised by that. Um, not sure if that was, uh, if that's reasonable to, for, for actually their production use case or if that was something I uh, can still improve upon. Um, next steps, open questions uh, are of course always there. So one I think is very interesting. Can I concatenate all churn data sets uh, and find and, and translate them to natural language and see if that joint data set fine tuning is then better than every individual one. Uh, could we use Chaplet values to identify what part of the input prompt was used for the classification and then compare it with XGBoost? 
or, or also not sure if that could help or not. Can we extract any relevant information from the LLM to enrich the tabular data set itself? So maybe those damn hallucinations everybody tries to get rid of are good for something after all when we can enrich our data sets uh, with some reasonable uh, guesses from that. Yes, here are the, uh, the links of, of the um, OpenAI API data set. And thank you for your time. Awesome. Thank you so much. Uh, we are going to kick you off the stage and get ready for our next speaker. Thank you so much, Sebastian. This thank was great. Bye. Cool. All right. So long.